fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at the Star Wars Retro Collection Phantom Menace 6 pack from Kenner, aka Hasbro. So I know I don't usually do Star Wars stuff on this channel and I really don't bother with the Retro Collection on the whole. I have one or two that I got cheap at Ollie's because they're all over the place at Ollie's. But I saw this at Target today and I don't know, I'm just... I'm a little nostalgic for the anniversary of Phantom Menace. I remember it was the first Star Wars that I personally went to see in the theater, and I remember being really excited. And although, you know, it's the movie that's probably not held up the best from the prequel trilogy over the years, I'm feeling the nostalgia. And I just, I walked by this, and it looked kind of charming, and I don't know, there was something about it. It spoke to me. Uh, apparently it is a Target exclusive. It retails for $59.99, which I kind of thought was cheap for six figures. It's only about $10 a piece. I feel like that's fairly reasonable. Uh, they are uh, five POA, uh, three and three quarter inch figures. Of course, we'll get into all that in a little bit. Uh, but I don't know. Just something about it seemed really fun. There were only two of them on the shelves, and I grabbed one. And as I walked away, another guy came up and took the other one. So they didn't last long. I don't know when they were put out, but they, they didn't get many, and they didn't last long. I'm assuming it's probably two to a case, if I had to guess. Uh, up here, we have some nice shots of the characters from the movie, which is pretty cool. Uh, over on this side, you just have the Star Wars The Phantom Menace logo. Over here is the same as the other side. Same over here. Not really anything going on on the bottom. But yeah, I just think they're kind of cool. Now, they are done in the, like, original Kenner style from back in 77. So you have, uh, you know, Padawan, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon Jinn, Queen Amidala, Darth Maul, Jar Jar Binks, and Battle Droid. It looks like they all come with an accessory except for Queen Amidala. I don't remember Jar Jar using a gun in the movie, except for that like one second when he had the part of the battle droid connected to his foot. I know he led the army, but I don't remember him using a blaster, but they gave him a blaster here. So let's go, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I just thought this would be something fun. Like I said, I know I don't usually do Star Wars reviews. And usually when it comes to my Star Wars needs, I'm either going Vintage Collection or Mission Fleet, RIP. But yeah, like I said, just something about these spoke to me. So let's go ahead and see if this was an unwise investment. I'll get everything out of the packaging here and we'll take a closer look. So before I actually open the figures, I wanted to show you that this is how they come in the box. It is six individually bubble on carded figures here. Basically what they do is they just take two of them, put them like this, and then you have three stacks of these in the packaging and that's just how it goes. So I will say the cards are nice. I don't love the giant retro collection thing here. I guess that's a sticker. I don't know if you could, it's actually raised up so maybe you could peel that off, but it's just, it really ruins the picture for me. I mean, the card looks nice. You know, they're unpunched, which is nice if you care about that. Uh, you have the figure, of course, on the bubble here. And I love these like old timey lightsabers that are all just made out of one piece of plastic. I think that's really cool. Wouldn't love it for something like the Vintage Collection, but it adds to the charm of these figures, in my opinion. So I like that a lot. Here we have Qui-Gon Jinn. Uh, again, Star Wars The Phantom Menace got his name, and it would be a nice picture of Liam Neeson, but didn't have that giant sticker there. The back is very basic. Uh, it just tells you the six that are in this set. And then this is just kind of like telling you a little bit about the retro collection. It has the generic Star Wars logo. So it doesn't have like a cross sell of the other figures. Not pictures anyway. It just lists their names. So all these are going to look pretty much the same from the back. But here is uh, Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi. Looking pretty good. Then we have Darth Maul. I think his uh, lightsaber done in the like lightish pink is even more hilarious just because of the double-sided nature of it, but I love it. I think that's really cool. Then we have a battle droid, which honestly looks pretty good. I mean, it's just a 5 POA battle droid. If you have a battle droid army, you know, I think this guy could sneak in. Not looking too bad there. Uh, then we have Queen Amidala. And then, of course, Jar Jar Binks with his trusty blaster, I guess. I mean, it would be one thing if he came with, like, a staff or one of those weird glowing blue orbs that, you know, take out the battle droids. But now he's just packing heat. Interesting. So I'm going to go ahead, get these all opened up, and then we'll take a look at the figures. Here are the six figures out of the packaging. We'll start over here on the right with Qui-Gon. As you can see, he has the robe. He has his little lightsaber here and the kind of neon green plastic. Honestly, it mostly just kind of looks like a katana. If I'm looking at the actual uh, hilt of the blade, 
You can see there's a couple buttons there, very basic. And then of course the whole thing is done in this neon green. But like I said, it kind of adds to the charm of the figures. I kind of like it. Now with the uh, robes that he has, they kind of like naturally stick together. There's no Velcro or anything like that. But because the underside is kind of a different, uh, more nylon fabric than the outside's kind of more plush and cloth-like, uh, it just kind of naturally stays closed, which is kind of neat. You can, of course, take it off. I find it easier to kind of put the arms back a little bit, and then you can drop the whole robe straight off, no issue whatsoever. And we can see the figure here underneath. I think the head sculpt looks pretty good. A little basic, but overall I like it. He has the ponytail back here. You can kind of see that gets in the way when turning the head from side to side. But all the detailing in the paint for the belt is very nice. The robes look good. You can move the arms up and down. And then, of course, you can kick forward. But can't really kick back because these pieces hit into this. So only forward movement there with the legs. But overall, I mean, the paint down here for the boots, I think, looks nice. The legs. Overall, it's a cool-looking figure. And I'll go ahead and give him his lightsaber back. Very cool. Next up, we have Padawan Obi-Wan. They did a nice job here with the braid kind of extending onto the chest. Now, of course, if you turn his head side to side, it's not always going to line up. So that's a small issue, but otherwise pretty good. And then he's got the little ponytail here in the back. Again, nice detailing on the belt paint. And then down here, they really caked on the paint down here for the boots. You can see it's very glossy, but it still looks pretty good. And then he has his blue lightsaber there. I believe he would be able to wear the robes as well if you wanted to take Qui-Gon's robes and put them on Obi-Wan. I don't see why that would be an issue, but I'm going to double check right now just to be sure. Yeah, it fits. Pop this over his head. There you go. So if you wanted to, it's kind of a shame it doesn't come with two set of robes because that would have been nice to have both figures have robes that they could then take off. But they give you one set of robes here or cloak, I guess, whatever you'd like to call it. And it can go on either figure. I would imagine it could probably go on any of the figures, but I'm only going to try it here on Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon since they had them in the film. But I'll leave them off for the rest of the video. Pop this back on here. Pretty good. Next up we have Darth Maul. I love the look of his double-ended lightsaber here. I think that's really fun. Head sculpt is pretty good. I will say though, it looks like they didn't like the eyes are just red, like the rest of them. I don't know if mine has like a misprinting because he has like a little bit of weirdness here on the bottom. I don't know if that's supposed to like I feel like there should be more of that around to pronounce his eyes. I don't know. Something about his eyes are a little off, but the rest of the face is nicely painted. The horns and everything are pretty nicely painted. I'm just not really sure what's going on with the eyes there. Maybe it's just supposed to be a little subtle bit of paint just to kind of make the eyes pop from afar. I mean, from afar, it doesn't look that bad. Just up close, it looks a little weird, but head can turn side to side, arm movement, leg movement, no issue there. And I love the double-ended lightsaber. I kind of wish they gave him his black cloak as well. You know, spring for cloaks for everybody. Come on, let's do it. Next up, we have Queen Amidala. Nicely done here. I think the paint applications here look really good. The face is nice and clean. All the gold here for her headdress looks really nice. You have all the gold here. And this is kind of a softer piece of plastic. So it doesn't get in the way. She has the, the hair braids down here. You can turn it a little bit side to side. And that's a softer piece of plastic. So that's a little movable as well. You can move the arms up and down, and then she does have kind of strange leg movement there, which you have just kind of like cloth on the inside, and then there's a foothold down here. You know, it's it's kind of what they had to do to make it work out. But yeah, she's definitely got some weird legs. But overall, I think the figure looks pretty good. I don't know what kind of accessory they would have given her, so I think it's fine that she didn't come with one. But yeah, overall, it's a pretty decent little figure. Speaking of not knowing what accessory to give someone, here's Jar Jar with his blaster. 
I don't know what that's about. But I will say the head looks good. I think they did a really nice job. You know, had the eyes have a simplistic paint job, but everything here on the head I think looks really nice. The inside of the ears are painted. And again, this is kind of a softer rubbery plastic, so the head can turn really no problem side to side. Really nice there. Uh, I don't know what this pose is for. Is he like asking someone to like kiss his hand when they do introductions? Is that supposed to go on like the saddle of one of the beasts? I don't really know. Also, my guy has some weird finger painting here. I don't know what. There's a little bit of splotch of paint there and the finger there is painted weird. If I take the blaster out, you can see that I'm guessing what happened was they were trying to paint the inside of the hand and it just it just got away from them because that's a mess. I don't I don't know what is going on there. Maybe I can take that off. Yeah, it looks like they were trying to paint the inside of the finger and it just went all over the place and that's really a shame um it looks weird so a little bit of paint qc issue there on mine which is kind of a bummer but he holds the blaster well enough i think the feet look good the pants all the detailing here for his clothes is good enough and then he can kick nicely so yeah overall honestly it's a decent little jar jar figure with the paint qc issues aside I think he turned out pretty great, actually. I really, I like this a lot. And I was trying to think. I don't think they've ever done Jar Jar in the Vintage Collection. Maybe this year we'll see one, since it's the anniversary. But this will be a decent little stand-in until they do. And then, last but not least, we have a Battle Droid. Now, I feel like because his limbs are so thin, I run into a little bit of problem. Like, the, the feet are kind of bent in toward each other. Which isn't the best, and I guess some of these, you know, other characters have similar issues. But, um, the, the feet can kick forward, and they feel solid. Like, when I try to bend them out myself, it's a solid piece of plastic. But, I don't know, the feet are kind of pigeon-toed there, and he has trouble standing because of it. Because they're already so thin, and because they're bent in. Uh, but the arm moves pretty well. Both arms here. I wish he had like a wrist swivel. I know they don't because that's not the style of the figure, but I feel like the blaster is a little bit of a weird angle. It works, but a little weird. And then the head can turn side to side. And then the backpack is kind of just integrated into the body. I will say that looks a little weird. Just having like the backpack just integrated into the body. I wish they could have like at least detailed like a line in here just to make that look a little less weird but for the most part it's a battle droid you know what to expect he looks perfectly fine good enough to get chopped by a lightsaber so i'm fine with it ultimately and if you like i said if you have a bunch of battle droids from other lines i feel like you could sneak him in on the back if you're just army building i really don't think anyone would notice but yeah, honestly, it's a nice assortment of figures for $10 a piece. I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Paint applications are good. The accessories are nice. Um, well, with the exception of Jar Jar, his paint applications are a little sloppy in certain areas. But honestly, if I'm just putting him on a shelf like this, I can't tell that finger is weird, especially with the blaster in the way. So it's not great, but it's not a deal breaker. Luckily, it's nothing on the face or anything like that. Uh, the Queen especially, I feel like her paint applications are really sharp, and those came out pretty great. Uh, yeah, overall, I think these are a lot of fun. Like I said, are they for everyone? Probably not. You could probably just get vintage collection, you know, versions of all of these characters. But there's just something about the charm of the original Kenner Star Wars toys with the little lightsabers and the more simplistic face designs and things like that. And I'm just really feeling the nostalgia for Phantom Menace. The other thing I forgot to mention is these are Target exclusive. And right now, Target has a spend 75 get 20 off promotion uh and this set is 60 dollars. so if you can find something else for 15 bucks boom 20 dollars right off the top so that was another deciding factor that made me want to pick this up but yeah overall i'm pretty happy with it i think the packaging is cool the cards are neat i don't love those big retro collection stickers on top of the pictures you know maybe they could have put them on the back or something you know put them in in this area where i i'm not going to read that anyway instead of right on top of the picture which is like the one part i actually want to look at but what are you gonna do um if i really had to nitpick i wish we got cloaks for all three uh force users that would be nice i do appreciate the inclusion of the one 
but I would have loved, you know, one for each and then a black one for Darth Maul. That would have been really cool. And then just the little paint issues on my Jar Jar. Other than that, it's a pretty solid little set. If this is something that appeals to you, I don't think you'll be disappointed. If you're someone who doesn't care about the retro five points of articulation feel of these original Kenner figures, then I would just stick to retro collection or other past lines that they've done that have more articulation. So it's really going to be kind of a your mileage will vary thing. But if you're looking for some some fun and something nostalgic for uh, both the original toys of the 70s and a movie that shockingly came out 25 years ago, that makes me feel old. Wow, by the way. <laughs> Don't love that part of it. But otherwise, nostalgia is fun. Uh, in any case, it's a fun little set. And I think if you can get the deal at Target right now, get this set for 40 bucks totally makes it worth it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.